Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Denial Dynamics is constantly developing and upgrading its existing products for both the domestic and international markets. Engineering News Senior Deputy Editor Keith Campbell joins me to discuss some of the developments with regards to its missile technology. Keith, welcome to the show. As a small company, Denial Dynamics relies heavily on South Africa's Department of Defence for research and development funding. But how does this benefit the country? As you say, Denial Dynamics is heavily dependent on research and development funding from the Department of Defence, basically the taxpayer, you and me and everyone else. This is because the missiles business is high technology and very expensive. It costs a lot of money to develop cutting edge technologies to keep up with international competition and the latest developments in defense and put it bluntly warfare around the world. Now, generally about 80% of the company's research and development funding is provided by the Department of Defense and about 20% by the company itself. This can bring uh, significant benefits in the form of export contracts. A classic example, perhaps the best example, is uh, the situation with a weapon developed over the past decade, uh, since the year 2002, on the back of about 100 million rand of funding from the Department of Defense and 20 million rand funding from Denel Dynamics. That weapon, which Danel Dynamics will not identify, but is believed to be the Umbani Precision Guided Munition or Smart Bomb, has won a contract from an undisclosed foreign customer worth 1.2 billion rand. And there's a good chance that that customer will place a follow-on order with another billion rand. So the country can uh, benefit significantly in terms of uh, foreign exchange. But of course this also creates high technology jobs in South Africa. It supports uh, scientists, engineers, technicians working in Denel Dynamics and in many other uh, companies because Denel Dynamics frequently subcontracts production of components to other companies. So it creates high tech jobs and maintains high tech jobs as well. And how important are international partnerships to this company? International partnerships have become very important to Denel Dynamics. The South African defense budget has been significantly reduced from the, day, the peak days of the 1980s. The money to totally develop all of Denel Dynamics projects in South Africa is no longer there. So, the company has a number of ideas, a number of projects that it can only advance with foreign investment. One can cite a number of these. Uh, for example, there is the uh, company's high successful Omkonto Naval Surface to Air Missile, which has been sold to the uh, South African Navy and to the Navy of Finland. Now, Denel Dynamics would like to develop a much longer ranged radar guided version of this missile. To do so, they need a foreign partner. Now, we know from uh, reports out of Brazil that there's a good chance that the Brazilian Navy will be that foreign partner. But if they don't get a foreign partner, the missile will not be able to go forward. Similarly, they developed a precision guided munition, a, a glide bomb, an unpowered uh, glide bomb, uh, called the Raptor for the South African Air Force. Thanks to foreign investment, they were able to develop a much improved version, a much longer range version called the Raptor 2, which is actually a missile. It has a rocket motor, giving it something like twice the range of the original. Uh, this could not have been developed without the foreign countries uh, providing the funds, and that country has ordered and is buying the missile. Uh, one can cite uh, a the Raptor 3 project, which is an even more improved version, which again would require investment by a foreign partner. Uh, most famously at the moment, there's the A-Data program for fifth generation infrared homing air to air missile, which is only going forward because the Brazilians joined the program and it's being developed on a shared basis with shared funding. Uh, one could also cite uh, 
concepts like the small guided missile, which uh, could only uh, advance again if they get a foreign partner to come in and help finance the program. And what are the, some of the future projects that Donnell Dynamics plans to undertake? Donnell Dynamics, like all defense companies, has to look to the future. Th th this is one of the difficulties of the defense business. You've got to try and see into the future, which by definition is uh, very, very difficult to do. And so the company has a kind of 10 to 20 year long term focus and so you have various ideas that are thrown around, some of which will never come to anything. But in the shorter term there is the small guided missile that I mentioned. Uh, this would have a, uh, this would be a small weapon that could be launched from fast jets at medium altitude uh, that would be able to hit targets with extreme precision but do very little blast damage. Now, there only is one weapon like this in the world today. It's a weapon developed for the British Royal Air Force called the Brimstone. And this weapon has proven brilliantly successful in the uh, war in Libya, where it has been used to destroy a lot of Gaddafi regime targets and do virtually no damage to surrounding civilian infrastructure. Uh, this has made these small guided weapons, uh, this has created huge international interest in these small guided weapons. Now, Danel Dynamics had this concept before the Libyan war. Uh, so that's one of the future pro projects they'd like to develop in the next few years. As I say, they need to get uh, foreign investment. I've already mentioned the idea of a Raptor 3. The, I've already mentioned the idea of a um, Conto um, radar equipped longer range on Conto missile. There are also uh, projects to develop uh, improved and further versions of the A-Data missile, including a concept to develop an air to surface version of the A-Data missile. And there are also projects to further improve the new Mokopa uh, missile, originally developed purely as an anti-tank weapon, but again they want to move it on to be a more multi-role weapon because this is also the international trend uh, with regarding to, to these kind of weapons because they've got small warheads, they've got directional warheads. In other words, when they blow up, the explosion goes in one direction and not all around. And so again, they do very little damage to surrounding civilian infrastructure, civilian populations. So those are some of the things they're looking at. They also have uh, a ideas further down the line than that. Thanks, Keith. That's the show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.